Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Jessica DeCola, the Marketing Manager for GPA. I wanted to thank you all for being here today. We're really excited to present to you uh, our webinar hosted by Craig Surrett, uh, Business Development Director for GPA, uh, about print solutions in a COVID-19 world, uh, something we're all experiencing at the moment. Uh, wanted to just chime you in on the, uh, the features of this webinar. Uh, you were all brought in on mute, both for video and audio, so we can't hear you nor can we see you, um, but we do have a chat feature. Um, please feel free to ask any questions throughout this presentation, and we will do our best to answer as quickly as possible. And at the end of the presentation, we'll field some of those questions from the chat portion. Um, really excited to have you here. Craig, I am going to uh, hand this off to you, my friend, uh, and thank you. Perfect. And as we always do, before we get started, just a, a quick sound check. Jessica, can you hear me okay? All good, Craig. Perfect. Thanks so much. Hey, folks, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, let me start off with a, a global comment, which is that in about 25 years of being in the print industry, I have always known this group, this industry, to rise to any challenge, right? And that includes the dark days of 9-11, and that certainly includes the, oh, the recession that we went through years ago. And there's no, there's no doubt that we have a serious challenge in front of us. But what's always been true of our industry is that we've always stepped up. And more to the point, we've always brought a tremendous amount of help, help to those in need. And today's message is very much that. We're here leading off with help and with hope. And the reason that we thought this was such a timely conversation is first and foremost, we know that there's frontline folks who are suffering. We also know that there's a tremendous amount of healthcare workers and essential services who are there doing their bit. And the solutions we're gonna talk about today, and we've got about 15 case studies, Right? They're focused on them. But I would be remiss, right? We're on this call because we're all in print. And as the saying goes, we are all in this together. And there's many on the call that are hurting as well. You've seen core drop significantly, right? You see your customers and, and so on and so forth. Today's conversation is being very, very specific. What can we do? that helps those that are still actively in the community and in the, in the economy. And in doing so, fundamentally, what are the volume opportunities that make a material difference to our print community? All right, with GPA, we're very fortunate. Fortunate to have direct experience with those on front lines. We're fortunate to have our wonderful print partners. We work extremely closely with our OEM partners. And further, work a lot with industry and government. And all that to say, we've got a unique perspective as print leaders, and we've distilled the information down into applications. But you need to understand, and if I could share, these applications are going to be fluid. We're gonna share about 15 as we roll through this. Understand this, there are four chapters, four phases of the challenge we're in now, and each will have a bearing on the applications we're talking about, how they evolve, and quite frankly, new applications that are going to start to emerge as we get through these four phases. In brief, those are the compliance phase, stability, recovery, and then what we're all trying to get to, the new normal. And just at a high level, the compliance phase is what we're all in right now. That's where the economy is shut, it's healthcare and essential services and the ripple through of our economy. But what are the applications that still exist, right? We'll focus on that. And then with those applications, as we roll through stability, consider that purgatory, right? That's where we're in that stable phase, but it's not, it's not good. It's just being stable. But I gotta tell you, the applications, they're going to evolve inside that phase and we're bridging in that right now. What we're all shooting for, right? From a print economy and the health of all of our all of our, our communities is getting into that recovery phase.
don't have to tell anybody on this call, right? It's compliance, just dealing with what's going on, and this purgatory, this stability of settling in with only part of the economy active. And so what? What makes sense in dollars and cents? How can we help? What are those applications that mean something for those at frontline and volume? Well, this won't be news. Right? A lot of you have seen this very first application, but there are nuances, important nuances that you need to know about for this application. Floor graphics, pretty basic. Here's what you need to know. Our research tells us that not only are these mandatory and needed right now, but these, these folks will become a semi-permanent, if not permanent fixture in every public space, right? Every public space in each of our economies. I mentioned that there's four phases, right? Four phases that are the compliance and then the recovery. Oh, what, what the heck does that mean to a floor graphic? It means that as retailers who are allowed to stay open, as it relates to pharmacy, grocery, clearly healthcare, they were pretty quick to try to get these solutions up and in place. They might not have been thought through thoroughly. The graphics might have been pretty basic. Frankly, some of the executions may not have been exactly as they should have been. And by example, these graphics should have right, an overlaminate, a no, uh, a no slip overlam. I back it up even further. Look, folks, some of you are probably saying, you know, I don't do that business, so that's wide format or whatever your hesitation. This is information share and what you need to walk away with on this call. These applications, they are valid in every print technology you're thinking of. And why is that? Because wide format can't keep up with the demand. Not for what's happening now, what's happening on the horizon. So from our perspective, sharing back to you, if you have offset, if you have indigo, if you have toner, if you have UV inkjet, all technologies, right? All technologies are doing volume on this. Now bring it back again. Right? The first executions were okay. They're gonna wear. Retailers and those who are essential services, they're gonna refresh these. And they're gonna refresh these on an ongoing basis for the immediate demand, for the social distancing. But importantly, all of them will come to realize that these are communication points. These will evolve from crisis to recovery from compliance through to informational through to promotional. So our message to all, these applications are valid on any print platform. They have special requirements and they're going to evolve and these represent volume today and volume tomorrow. The caveat before we move to the next application, some of you might still have some reservations and say, well, I'm not doing that today, or I don't know exactly what to do. You said over laminate, which ones? What are the considerations? What adhesives? We're print, and we'll get there together. There's expertise that's out there in the market, and certainly GPA makes itself available to give guidance on all of the above. But together, we're going to bring solutions, not just for healthcare, not just for essential services, this will permeate every public space that we know of. And we can all help and we can all bring some value, frankly, some volume onto our presses. It's gonna evolve. Now, for many from a North American perspective, this particular application as a floor graphic is unfamiliar, but we're learning. We're learning from the Europeans. We're learning from the Asians. We're seeing where this challenge has presented itself and applications that never were, but certainly are now. And those same considerations play out here. Here's what I want you to take away from this slide. Don't think for a minute that your end user, your customer, whomever, don't 
and don't assume that they know of these applications or that they're thinking it through. Our job in the print community is to shine a light on applications that are bringing value and help to all fronts. And whether it's a school board, whether it's higher ed, whether it's retail, whether it's healthcare, they want to comply, they want to have these, but they likely have not thought all the way through. How does one do this? Where would I do this? And you printers on the front line, you're in a prime position to educate and share and help them to understand what solutions there are. And for our OEM friends, you too, understanding that volume on core has gone away with your print partners to help spread the word about these types of applications and more. And by the way, for GPA, we're gonna continue this series in about three or four weeks, we will be looking at the second two chapters of this, of this process. We will be looking at the recovery and the, the new economy, but that for a later time. For this slide, understand that there are applications that never were, and all of us in print bring value and we can shine a light on what's possible. These applications are everywhere, but going back to our model of evolution, from compliance, stability, and all the way through, these applications are here to stay and evolve. There are some nuances. I mean, clearly you're saying, okay, I get it. I'm in print, it's COVID, it's don't do this, don't do that. We get it. Here's what you may not be thinking. Two fronts. One, these applications will evolve. And think of this theme, it's clean and safe. Why do I say that? Because clean and safe is the mentality of every retailer, of every, of every organization that manages a public space. And though we're all sheltering at home today, the economy won't come roaring back, so the smart people say. Consumers are going to be hesitant to go back in. Before you go to any public forum, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the environment is clean and safe. So these messages are going to evolve where they're encouraging the consumer out of that safe, at home cocoon and into the environment. And so these messages will start to take that on to informational, to promotional and encouraging consumers to come back in. Long story short, these are applications, again, not going away. These have a lifespan and they're gonna be around at least the end of year and into 2021. Think about that from a self-adhesive point of view, but here's part two. I mentioned the theme of clean and safe. Right? Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that every public space for applications like this will have a requirement to be cleaned in a more aggressive fashion than ever before. And you'll say, so what? And so what is when you have those customers that are looking for your leadership in these, know that some graphics will be washed down with isopropyl alcohol and probably bleach. That's the so what. Depending on the print technology, that may not last. And so experts as we all are, we need to coach and counsel our customers that when it comes to these types of graphics, an over laminate is bulletproof and can help that sign stay for the long term. Or as well, there are some print technologies that have durable ink and they may not require an over laminate. But as a printer, maybe you're unsure of that. It's okay, we're all in this together. Your takeaway is, if I could suggest, the signage applications you will see more so than ever before. They're going to evolve and they're gonna to need to be cleaned. And if you're thinking about that, you're gonna to wanna to lean on your substrate supplier, your subject matter expert, understand your print technology and the requirements of these applications and what you can do. This is not an informational share on GPA. We're simply shining a light, but if anybody's uncertain about what's exactly required, I would be remiss in not pointing out GPA has your back and we're happy to share our expertise for these applications and all the ones that we're sharing. Let's move on. Unless you've been locked in for the last three weeks or so, you must have seen this. If you have surfaced for air, you have seen clear barriers in public space. 
Here's the next part. They're not going away. It's not a judgment, good or bad. It's just they're up there and they need to be up there for social distancing. Now, for many, we're in print, right? So many of you are saying, terrific, got nothing to do with my business. And I would respectfully say that that's not true. Not that we're encouraging folks to get into the plexi business. That's, a, that's another business and another day. But understand this, coming back to this compliance phase, these have gone up. Look at the image on your left. There's the problem with that. The problem is people will be running into that. It is a hazard. And follow me on this. We know based on the retailers that we're working with that they understand that. At a minimum, you're going to see some strips to indicate watch out for this. But again, back to our evolution theme, know that these flat pieces of plastic represent a communication touch point. So past the watch out for this, you will see the opportunity Communicate, first compliance, then informational. And once again, these will turn into promotional. All that to say, every flat surface in a public space represents opportunity to communicate. And in the world we're evolving into, you're going to see a lot more white flex vinyl, call them vinyl labels, that do just that. Information, promotion, compliance in all of these installs. And once again, uh, from the data that we're getting, from the government parties that we're talking to, these applications are not going away anytime soon. Expect them to stay in place. Okay, many of you have seen the, the large format graphics uh, that, that appear on elevators. Once again, and I'll reference the, the earlier where to stand graphic that we used, right, to share how those, uh, where to stand and, and what is required in a, in a new social distancing space. Okay, again, every flat surface. So for these elevator graphics, you're gonna see a lot more tactical, informational, COVID compliant installs, but as well, you're gonna see that evolve over time. Once this gets into the recovery phase, you're gonna see more information and perhaps even more promotional. I take it back. Yes, these are great for wide format, but look at the graphic on the left. That speaks to offset. It also speaks to narrow format digital. And once again, clean and safe. All these graphics are going to be subjected to a cleaning process unlike they've seen before. Keep that in mind. Well, if it's true that every flat surface is a communications touch point, certainly are seeing these outdoors as well. This is a product called Aluma Graphics. Some of you may or may not be aware, right? This is literally aluminum with a print surface and it has longevity outdoors for up to a year and where social distancing is a requirement indoors look around any major city today same thing queuing up for pharmacy for grocery for anything and today right folks are just trying to survive it's even there are even uh, organizations that are spray painting the pavement to try to create that there's no one on this call who's gonna suggest that that's gonna stay in place forever. It's not reflective of leading brands. No one wants to have that. So as we're evolving through compliance and through stability, and as we get to recovery, you're still gonna have the requirements of social distancing in public spaces, but we're confident you're gonna start seeing an investment in better graphics, better communication, better design, Etc. There's a quick information piece on this particular product. It is a wide format. It does last for a year. It's easy to install. You can see the graphic on the right, by example, and see how the aluminum literally conforms to the asphalt underneath. Equally important, this product comes up in one piece, so the removal is clean as well. We expect to see in this process a lot more as we move to recovery and into the new normal. That is Illuma Graphics. And if that's true, in every public space, you're going to see a lot more temporary signage. We get the image on the right. That's our world in compliance. 
right? We're all dealing with COVID. On the left are the first green shoots of what we're seeing today and what will continue to evolve. Yes, it's a big pharmacy, and you might say, I don't have a big pharmacy, and that's okay. For every big national, there are regionals and small operators. In fact, for curbside pickup, we expect to see a lot more restaurants, mom and pop shops. Everybody needs to have more effective queuing because it's a zoo out there and signage helps. And these are the solutions that a lot of end users are not thinking about. And where we as print leaders can take this information out into the industry and shine a light on this and bring solutions. And it's okay if they don't want exactly this. Maybe they don't need Illumographics, but they probably need this. We cannot take any risk in thinking that they've thought this through. They're just trying to survive and we're trying to help them build their businesses back up. We're simply sharing solutions that can help. A lot of activity and a lot of dialogue on this. Look, printers and friends can't begin to express gratitude and pride for the way many in our industry have realized that a lot of their cores moved, changed, gone quiet. But the innovation, the can do spirit of taking the capabilities and punching out shields to bring aid and help to front line, um, it's, it's humbling. And, um, and, just, and just a lot of respect for all of you who have done that. For our part, as GPA, our job is supply chain. And on that, I wanna share some important things. We know the stocks that are in demand and it's possible to support this industry, but you need to understand those that are doing it and those that are thinking about doing it, which we encourage you to do. This is good volume, but there has been a run on these products unlike we've ever seen because we're in unprecedented times. And so please know that the domestic supply has been tapped hard. For our part, we pride ourselves on our supply chain and we are working diligently with our mills and our partners, both domestic and anywhere we can get it. But understand that a lot of it is now getting pushed out in time. There's some that's still available, but it's few and far between. Know that there's more coming as we negotiate with our supply chain and they want to produce as well. Of course, everybody wants to help, right? But we've not seen a demand like this, not ever. And so we're working with the mills. There are a variety of products, friends, and from us to you, we're happy to share anything that brings support to our frontline workers. Rigid vinyl, clear, of course. There are two versions of polyester, APET and PETG in a variety of different thicknesses, right? That's what we're working on to bring aid into the economy, okay? Setting expectations, again, we're working with supply chain. What I would say to you, if you're in this business, whether you're working with us or someone else, put orders in and make it firm POs because as soon as an order hits, it's gone and it's committed. So help yourself and help Frontline by doing that. If you're thinking about getting into this game, don't be afraid. There are resources to help you, but know that in this business, you'll have to make commitments because there's such a demand on these. And with that, please allow me, our outlook is that this application will stay steady for uh, quite an extended period of time, and here's why. For Frontline, let's hope that we get this issue under control. God help us. That's what we all want. But here's why applications like this, some distance safe and clean. Consumers want to be protected. And when we all start emerging from the cocoon, there will be a part of the economy where consumers want that added protection, that added peace of mind, and expect entrepreneurs to be coming up with versions of this specifically targeted to consumer when the PPE for our, our healthcare workers starts to fall. And let's all hope that we get to that point soon. But that, friends, is why we expect to see these applications have a longer horizon than some might expect. 
Anyway, food for thought. We're moving on to the next application. These are durable documents. And while traditionally we see these with EMS, right, frontline folks, they're going to go everywhere. And what does everywhere mean? We'll take it back to maybe the retail or the restaurant. We'll talk about restaurants for right now. These applications are the ones that if you're in EMS, and for the Europeans who are joining us, these are emergency services, firefighters, police officers, healthcare workers. They use these and they do wash them down with bleach and isopropyl alcohol. And there are great synthetic solutions for these, right? But it's going to permeate the economy. Again, clean and safe. Clean and safe means retail. Clean and safe means restaurants. And on restaurants, maybe it's recipe guides, menus. All of them now are no longer going to be paper, but we expect to see a big uptick in synthetic. We'll go back to earlier conversation, and some might say, well, I've got such and such a press, and I've got such and such a press. When do we laminate? When is it okay to UV top coat? When is it okay to take it right from the press and immediately going out knowing that it's going to be washed down with alcohol and bleach? And the answer is, because we're in print, it depends. You have to know your press. You have to know the applications. You have to know how they're going to clean it. And that's tough. No one really knows. The cleansers they're using today, right? The cleansers they're using, well, before we got into this mess, they were diluted. In the next version, uh, it may be that these are much more concentrated in 50% or 60%. This is where we as print professionals band together from printers to our OEM friends and us as substrate experts, knowing all that's involved, we're in position to help bring the right product and solution to restaurants, to healthcare, to retail, as we all go through this chapter together. Before I go uh, against this slide, these are applications on the left that are durable documents, and they're typically white polyesters, synthetic paper, which is vinyl, maybe styrene. The reason I want to shine a light on what's on the right-hand side, they're available in neon colors as well. So just know that sometimes a simple monochrome execution can be very vibrant depending on your substrate. Know that there's a lot of solutions that are COVID compliant that can help bring a lot of value. And that takes us back into sticky stuff, back into the label environment. And I promise I'll just be brief with this one, but we're seeing new applications as we evolve through the process. I apologize for the graphic on the, on the left. Um, the real application I wanna focus on is a rather small one. It's down in the bottom left-hand corner, but these are applications that never existed before but they do now, and we expect them to be around for a while. In parts of Europe, the graphic on the bottom left states as a bumper sticker that I am an essential worker. And that may very well come to the United States. You know, whether it does or not, we don't know. We'll let the government officials let us know. But the point would be there are solutions like this and printers, you're in position, right, to be a resource, whether it's a government agency, whether it gets outsourced, whether, it, whether you're simply helping with applications like this, there are more and more of these coming literally ever, every week. The middle two graphics are some of what we had talked about before, setting expectations at, uh, at different establishments, whether you're open or not. But it's more on the right side of this, of this page that I'd like to focus on. Speaking of applications that never were, and these are clearly self-isolating labels targeted at consumers. And there's many of these that are now going out and printers are putting up their own storefront. And some that don't have a storefront are leaning on friends with distribution and outreach who can communicate these things, but there's applications like this that are very visible at the consumer level, simply communicating, leave my UPS and FedEx on the door. Thank you very much. Applications that never work. And speaking of which, I love our print industry and how things evolve. On this, some printers getting together with some distillers, distillers who have seen their volumes some spike and some go down, but they've realized that distillery lines are pretty darn good 
at making hand sanitizers. And we've seen a number of these around the country where distilleries are now producing hand sanitizers and there's been a significant uptick in paper labels to, uh, to mark the product as prime labels, as you can see in these graphics. We don't expect to see that decline anytime soon. And again, it's showing some innovation of those in this market that are adapting. And that takes us as well to a national franchise that just announced this over the weekend. And they're using a label. And what I'd like you to know is, it is our expectation and those that we've spoken to that uh, for the national franchises, if there's one or two that adopt, typically the rest of the industry will follow and then trickle down to small mom and pop. So let me tell you a very quick story on this. This is Papa John's, as you can tell. And this is core to their whole campaign about no contact pizza delivery. It's an ad campaign that started literally this past weekend. They're using this, this digitally imaged label to bring peace of mind to consumers that this product from pizza oven right to the box and then left at the door has not been touched since it left the oven. They even go with an online campaign showing you how they do that and a TV campaign to communicate it as well. But importantly, there's volume applications for these labels. And we know that because we're seeing it as well across the industry and including curbside pickup. It's true. For curbside pickup, a lot of restaurants, even though, you know, even though uh, they put all their, their integrity into the product, consumers want a little bit more peace of mind and so restaurateurs are taking that added step and they're putting small labels on some of the pickup packages. The graphics in the bottom, right, are voiding labels or tamper evident labels. We don't think that that is a requirement in the applications we're speaking of, but we've been more than amazed at the number of people, the number of businesses that have taken an extra step or maybe they're thinking about things that we're not. And that's a challenge back to everybody on this call. We're sharing what we're seeing. Share back, help highlight some of the next applications. And maybe there is more volume on tamper evident. The point would be on this, these applications in volume didn't exist two weeks ago. Just this last weekend, we have a, a national franchise ro rolling forward with it. We expect to see a lot more of this and a lot more variation. So let's all lead and bring solutions, knowing that who we're talking to might come back and say, great, but can you do this? And that will be the genesis of the next application. All right, just a few more, and then we'll get into a discussion. There are school boards, well, there's all school boards today that are doing e-learning. Fantastic. There are a few that have said, you know, there's still a gap and we need to have, we need to have resources in the hands of students. And so some school boards are actually printing their coursework and putting it into well, applications like what you see on screen. So here would be my suggestion. If there's a few, there's probably more. Do not think for a minute that every school board has thought all the way through. And oh, by the way, if a school board has thought this and they have an implant, once they elect to move forward with this, the volume will, will far exceed what the implant is likely capable of doing. Position yourself as a resource for overflow, for support. Frankly, you might be the ones that bring these ideas and the yes, you can solutions to folks like this. One last point before we move off. If this is true in education, Depending on how long we go, where else do solutions like this exist? Will it apply at higher ed? Will there be applications in other parts of the economy? We won't know unless the print sales team start reaching out and talking about unconventional applications and, hey, what about this? On that note, I have to tell you that the GPA sales team had a pretty good laugh at this, so bear with me. 
if you don't know what you're looking at, you are looking at adult coloring books. And that specifically means that these are landscapes. These are famous pictures. These are color by numbers. These are not, quote unquote, adult coloring books. They're adult coloring books. What's that mean? Same story as before. Some printers have pulled down art, created their own, and have a storefront. Many of you say, not my business, not going to do it. I like this application because it shows the inventiveness. Some of these companies have found partners with the distribution and have forged a quick alliance to take solutions like this to drive some volume and frankly some value, as well as some much needed at home entertainment for those who've been locked in for a period of time. We're into uncharted territory. Speaking of which, as we move to close on this, why in the world would we put this graphic up? Designer brand Ralph Lauren making masks and gowns. The answer is, this is gonna go for a while. And even as we get to recovery and the new normal, it's clear that the way we go out into the economy is gonna be likely very different. We've spent a lot of time today talking about social distancing and barriers and signage and communication, but it also means that consumers are likely gonna have changed behavior. We mentioned it's likely they will have, many consumers will have their own PPE, their own shields. And here, a major brand is saying, we get it and we see an opportunity for masks and gowns. And you might say, what does that have to do with print? I'll go back to the beginning. Print innovates. We bring solutions. We bring help. We bring aid. We bring innovation. I have to tip my hat to our friends over at Superior Print. This is their, oh, this is their baby. This is an interesting idea. And you might say, if you're skeptical, well, that doesn't help anybody. That's, that is not a surgeon mask. It takes us back to the earlier slide. Why do we show that? Because if Ralph Lauren is in the business, that means that they get it, that consumers don't want to walk around looking like they have a surge mask on all the time. They want something more fashionable. And with applications like this, we believe there are some early opportunities, opportunities to dress up a little bit, knowing that we're probably going to have to wear surge masks potentially for a while. And you don't want to look like that. You want to have the stars and stripes. But there are evolutions on this. What about going to college game? What about even going to your retail store? Will there be a number of these on the entrance? Will teams, right? Little League, others, will people be wearing this? Not just because it's a requirement or for safety, but to dress it up a little because, let's face it, COVID-19 is just a downer. So applications like this, is that viable? Well, it's interesting. The market will tell us. Lead, lead, lead with innovation. Last conversation for the day, and then we'll open it up for, for questions and answers. Direct mail. Intel tells us that we are about to see the largest surge in direct mail in our lifetime. And why is that? It's because the internet, as wonderful a tool as it is, is cluttered with noise, right? It's hard to get a message through. And direct mail, direct mail has always been an excellent tool. And in this time of crisis, will directly put information into the hands of the consumer to break through that, that clutter. Go back to what we said before, right? This is an evolution. It's compliance, stability, recovery, and the new normal. Consumers will be hesitant to come out of their cocoons. The longer we stay, the more hesitant, believe it or not, research shows they'll be wanting to come out. They're more concerned, more scared, at least a segment of the population. Direct mail will be one of the key tools of communicating clean 
and safe. Come back to the pharmacy, come back to the drive-through. Over time, come into the store, right? Spend more with us and direct mail will be that tool. Some nuances, slamming mail out probably won't be the tool. It's likely to be, given that, that nuance of the consumer, they're going to need to be coached and, and encouraged. And so mail that drives higher open rates, higher response rates, that's ROI. So expect to see uh, more elevated direct mail pieces, more creativity, more incentives, more cards, uh, stored value or discount cards, anything that can encourage the consumer to not go online, but to return to the physical economy. And that friends will take a period of time, several, several quarters, we expect to see direct mail ticking up. From GPA to you, hopefully some of the content here was valuable, interesting, things that can, well, enable you to take solutions to front line for those most in need, whether they're healthcare, essential service, but hopefully we've shared information that also gives you hope, knowing that we're going to evolve through time, right? That these applications are going to morph and evolve and there's going to be new ones. On behalf of GPA, and I'm speaking specifically to our print community first, our printers, if anything on this, in this discussion, is foreign to you, if you're unsure, if you're uncertain, there's many good providers out there. We regard ourselves as best in class. We have resources online and from our sales professionals around the country. Online, there's a lot of great and valuable resources, but we encourage direct interaction. This is just a graphic of just some of the pieces that we do. It's important to note that we cover all platforms, from offset to every nuance of digital you can think of. And, and subject matter expertise on how to do that. Enough said, if you need help, we got your back. For our OEM friends, same deal. Let me confess to you on behalf of GPA, in this chapter, the interest of conversations from a substrate point of view to talk about pretty, pretty paper, you know, it's gone down quite a bit. I'll bet the same thing for OEMs. Not a lot of folks wanting to talk a lot of speeds and feeds. We're all talking about how we can bring some value and stability into the print environment. So to our OEM friends, we got you back too. Anything that we can do to help you in communicating these solutions and bring aid to end users and frontline. If you guys help put the word out, we'll help deliver. We're all in this together. Let's go back to where we started. We're on a journey. We're doing okay. We need to continue bringing help. Help to those on the front line. And frankly, guys, we're in print, right? And we got to help our print partners all the way through. And hopefully, some of the information shared today shows some of the volume applications that can do both. Bringing help to front lines, bringing volume to printers, and maybe it's a little uncomfortable, but we'll get there together. We're currently straddling compliance and stability. Soon we'll be on to recovery and normal, or the new normal. Again, we're going to have a, a separate presentation on just that. For today, how can we band together? And on that, it's a challenge to everybody on this call. It's been lovely to spend time together. But it doesn't mean jack unless we take action. And so I challenge each of us humbly. What can each of us do with our businesses? Focused on the front line, knowing what they need, bringing value there. What can we do to help them? And in doing so, we all need to survive, right? We need to have printers employing printers and their customer service folks and everybody involved. How do we bring that volume? Please take action. If we can help on anything discussed or if you have an idea, we'll all get there together. And with that, you've been very kind to uh, let this 25-year veteran walk you through what GPA is seeing in this phase of the COVID-19 crisis. We will get there together. Having said that, let's, uh, Jessica, why don't I bring you back online, if, uh, if you don't mind? Maybe there's some questions 
that are uh, coming through. Happy to answer whatever we can. Jessica, what do we got? Yeah. Thank you, Craig. Um, I, a lot of you are asking questions as to whether or not we will be sending this recording. I apologize at the beginning of this, we had some broadcasting issues. So uh, when you receive the recording via email, and we will send it to everyone that is here today, uh, you will see the very beginning of the presentation. Craig, they missed the first two slides, uh, but you very nicely circled back to that at the end. Um, I do have a question um, from Derek, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, um, but he asked, Craig, if we have any substrates with antimicrobial coatings on them. So that's a, that's a great question. So I'll field first part, and I've got a colleague, Marianne Gears, and uh, she can chime in as well. So what you need to know, uh, for, at least from what we see in the market, there's a lot uh, that are looking at, um, at copper, infused copper in, uh, in some of these substrates. What uh, is uncertain for us are those that not only make that claim, but also have the documentation uh, from FDA that says that it performs as described. Now, I don't want to take away from any laminates that do that. So far in our experience, uh, and, and those that we source from anyway, we can't say that, but we're searching for those that can. So at this point, for us, it's a bit murky. There's a lot of claims, but there is a little bit of uncertainty as far as we can see. Marianne, what would your comment be if, uh, if you're available? Hi, Craig, I am available. I've done a lot of research on that. Um, there, as Craig had said, there is absolutely no uh, real claim that say the antimicrobials will stop the coronavirus. The coronavirus, if you research it, the largest particle of coronavirus is smaller than the um, uh, bacteria is. They're, they're two different uh, compositions. So um, for what I see and my level of comfort, I would be happier if somebody took isopropyl alcohol or a Clorox wipe and cleaned off the, uh, the, the menu that they were going to hand me in advance of uh, worrying about whether the antimicrobial um, efforts are gonna work. Just my two cents. Thanks, Craig. Yeah, thanks for that, Marianne, perfect. Great. Craig, I've got another question here from David Stowe. He asked if uh, you are, he said, you say that you have intel showing that there's a surge in mail coming. We're recommending mail to all clients. Do you have any intel about government aid to support the USPS or any intel about reduced short-term posted rates? Great question. Thank you for that, David. You know, I saw online uh, someone had posted on that topic, uh, but as I dug into the article, you, <laughs> they led with 50% off postage, which I, which I think we would all agree would be a godsend. As I got into the article, no, it was a hopeful uh, um, posting, uh, a little bit misleading. I personally have have no information from government sources right now that tell us that anything is on the horizon. But let's all say a little prayer and cross our fingers. That would be, I think that would be good for everybody. Sorry, I wish I had better news, but nothing as of this point. Thank you, Craig. Um, I've got one last question that had quite a few likes, so people are interested in, in uh, Dave Persh's question, which is how can you approach this from a sales perspective? For instance, presenting ideas to a restaurant without sounding like you're taking advantage of it. Yeah, no, and I think that's fair, right? Um, and look, take this as intended, but we're, everybody right now, no one wants to be sold to. We don't, you know, if you're sitting at home, you don't want to be sold to. Um, I, I say from the heart, and then sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard as it comes out, but the, the intention's got to be there. We're all just trying to help, right? We're, we're all just trying to help. The, the more that we can convey, I mean, I don't mean to get preachy at all, but as one sales professional to another, I would suggest the more that we can convey that sincerity of, of just simply looking at, um, you know, how hard the business has been hit and what's been effective, you know, around the country. And, and please uh, feel free to share anything from this presentation that might help to, to convey, look what others are doing and maybe it's something you should consider. And if they get it, if they genuinely believe it to be true, you're not selling anymore. You're simply being a, a good advocate and consultant that to help them to keep their business afloat. If you do that, the application will come. From the application will come the revenue. I know, sounds a little bit syrupy, but I believe it to be true. And so I'll, 
I'll leave that for you for your consideration. We've got a really great question, Craig, from Miriam Vasquez uh, in regards to that superior finishing mask that you posted earlier in your presentation. Um, yeah. She asks if there's any data or research that states that synthetic papers will protect from the coronavirus. Okay, so just so I understand the, the question correctly, so this is in reference to the masks, and then it, it goes over to synthetics as well. Is is, is that uh, correct? Is okay. So a couple things. Great question. Great. Um, Mary, did you want to? Craig, it's, Craig, it's Mary Ann. Can I can I answer that, please? Because we've had several yeah. questions on this mask. Yeah, so sure. the the idea behind that, it's actually made for board that we sell, and it's actually designed to reduce your hand contact with mouth and nose. So if you've been following the coronavirus, they tell you not to to touch your nose or your face. Um, it's to shield you know from coughs and sneeze sneezes and it's disposable and recyclable. It's not a respirator or a dust mask, but again, it's it's something that you would wear for a temporary period of time. Uh, say, I, you know, I've been wondering about the Major League Baseball and how they're gonna open up the ballparks. I would not be surprised uh, if people aren't wearing uh, Cincinnati Reds or Washington Nationals or God forbid uh, Yankees uh, masks on their face. That's for my <laughs> East Coast team, but uh, you know, that's the design behind it. So it's not an antimicrobial, it's more a protection uh, for your hand contact through your mouth and nose. Sorry, Craig. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, yeah, and this is what it's, what's important. It, this is a forum for us all to share information. I, I know it's getting overused. We're all in this together. Folks, we are all in this together. So this is about exchanging ideas. Other questions, Jessica? Great. I've got one more um, from Bork, uh, and he asks, is GPA looking into drop block tissue Fredragoni Italy is developing? I don't know how far this is known in the U.S. You know, I'm going to pass that one over to my partner, Marianne. I am not aware. Marianne, um, any line of sight on that? Please? Not at the current time, but it sounds like uh, when I connect with our Fredragoni Colleagues, uh, later this week, I'll need to ask about that, but thank you for that from our colleagues over in Europe. Perfect, thank you. Um, Jess, I will throw it back to you, but before I do, uh, I just, on a personal note, wanna thank everyone again for their time and, and for listening in. There will be a follow-up presentation. If you found this helpful, uh, please look for that. As well, all of the resources that we're sharing today, not just the ideas, which are out there, happy to support, content, anything that we can do, let's, let's all agree. The most important thing is that we help those on frontline and then through the process, we bring some, some value and some volume to the, the print community and we gotta get some volume on press. We're gonna continue to learn, but we're gonna band together. So from the heart, thank you so much for time together and, uh, and please do let us know, is there anything we can do to help you and your business? Jessica, I'll pass it back to you. Great. One last question, uh, Craig, and then we'll be at the top of the hour and we'll wrap it up. Uh, Amanda asked, what material is the face mask made out of? I'm assuming she's referring to the one from Superior. Yeah, no, great question. It's, um, and I can, if you're interested, uh, let me know. Just get in touch uh, over here at the, uh, at the email. Um, we can send you the article and the link, but it's a uh, recycled paper, uh, frankly, that they, they um, die cut and forge into place. So um, it's nothing special. Uh, quite frankly, and because of its design, it's in, it's known that it's not breathable per se. It's just a shield, and so it's recycled paper. Perfect. Well, Craig, that takes us to the end of this presentation. Uh, we want to thank you guys again so much for joining us today. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we will be sending this recording out to everyone who joined us today. Um, we have our contact information up on the screen right now. Uh, please feel free, as Craig mentioned, to reach out to us if any of this is of interest to you or we can answer any questions further. Um, Craig, I'll let you take it home. All right. Well, thanks, Jessica. And just as we close out, the most important thing for everybody, please stay safe, right? Stay positive, stay engaged, and together we're going to get through this. There is no doubt, right? That's who we are. We're going to get through this. So be safe, everyone, and thank you so much for your time. Take care.